Our scripture lesson is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Uh, I would invite you, and Michael, what page is that on? I didn't write it down. 6-10. Say again? 1816. 1816. The first 10 verses. No, no, I know that. What page of the Bible? 1816. 1816. Thank you. 1816. Um, the nature of my sermon is such that you may find it easier if you have the lesson open. Gentle um, lesson. But one word or the other. Restoration. Yes. Hear the reading of God's word. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are doing something, I'm sorry, if anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nonetheless, the one who receives instruction in the word shall, should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A person reaps what they sow. Whoever reaps to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. May God add his blessing to this, the reading of Scripture. I enjoy people watching. People are people. All different sizes and shapes. With a wide range of talents and interests. A quiet joy that has been recently sharpened, having spent time with my grandchildren, is to notice children about the age of Alice and Lulu. Sometimes as I notice children in that age bracket, I just smile. It's a reminder of my own grandchildren. Sometimes I'll offer a compliment. Sometimes I may even ask the question, as I did yesterday. Oh, how old? Three years old. Uh, I have a four-year-old as a granddaughter. What do you think? People watching. A very natural, common human behavior. Do you agree? So you share my interests. Thinking further, what do you think? People watching. Is it natural to go from simply watching to quickly beginning to compare and judge? True? There are two sides to judging, at least two sides. I'm better than the person I'm looking at, or mm -mm, I don't measure up. They're better than I am. And we're taught, judge not lest you be judged. Yet, what's clear in today's lesson is that we are called to be watchful, to watch, to observe. Watchful of others, but also watchful of ourselves. The first theme is watchful of others. Verse 1, brothers and sisters, if somebody is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Caught in sin. Observe. We watch and we make an observation. 
live by the Spirit, those who live by the Spirit, those who are spiritually mature, those who are guided by the Spirit, we're called to restore the person gently. That phrase caught my attention, and it's one reason why the title of the sermon is Gentle Restoration. I'm going to be candid. When it comes to watching, observing a person who is, in my perception, sinning or missing the mark, I am not very skilled, or and or I have not been guided often to try to gently restore them. I think what's most important as Christians and those who are in leadership position, those who are mature in their faith, if they observe a behavior that they believe is sinful, I think the most important quality is to be very mindful as guided by the Spirit. I want to remain open to that spirit, so that if I observe a person who I know is sinning, a brother or sister in Christ especially, that if guided by the spirit, that I would talk with them and I would share, and hopefully by that spirit and truth, gently restore them on their path. Watchful of others, but most important, and the primary focus of this sermon, is watchful of ourselves. The second part of that first verse continues with, but watch yourself, or you may be tempted. So the Apostle Paul is instructing very clear, practical application on how we live our faith. We're to be watchful of one another. Watch others, perhaps somebody who's caught in sin, but most important to be watchful of ourselves. And then he goes on with a different teaching, and we'll come back to being watchful of ourselves. Verse 2 straightforward teaching. Carry each other's burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. It's a familiar verse, isn't it? Bear one another's burdens, is the King James translation. Carry one another's burdens. What does it mean to bear and carry one another's burdens? Well, first and foremost, if we bear one another's burdens and we fulfill the law, what's the law? Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. The law of Christ boils down to loving being truly loving. So if we are called to love our neighbors ourselves and to bear one another's burden, what does it mean to carry another's burdens? Well, unpacking that a little bit, first and foremost, sometimes it's literal. If you see somebody who's struggling with a load, you can step along inside and say, can I carry that load for you? A physical load. Groceries. You know, a neighbor helping out physically with a task that's overwhelming for somebody. But most of the time, bearing one another's burdens has to do with connecting to that person. Empathy. Do we really care and connect with people as we experience them in our day-to-day -day living, in our day-to-day -day life? Bearing one another's burdens through prayer. Bearing one another's burdens through encouragement. See, sometimes simple acts make a tremendous difference. Who is our neighbor? Those in need. Are we observant? Are we watchful to see those who may be need, in need in our midst? At the same time as we lift up these ways of bearing one another's burdens, and there are plenty more, we also need to be cautious because there is an unhealthy way that we might bear one another's burden. That is, first and foremost, physically, we don't have the power to do the task. If our neighbor is roofing, and they're doing it themselves, and it's a burden to them, 
If we have no knowledge of roofing, if we have no business climbing a ladder physically, it is not a loving act to try to help that person and bear their burden of roofing their house, right? Pretty straightforward, common sense. But it is important to know physical limitations. But not only physical limitations, it's also being mindful of paying attention to our own limitations and how we respond when we desire to bear one another's burdens. Continuing, and we'll get back to that again. Guard against comparing ourselves with others. Continuing the verse, and this is the theme that we introduced earlier, I introduced earlier, and we're coming back to. If anyone thinks that there is something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions, and then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to others. They think of themselves as more than they are. An inflated self, sense of self-worth. Somebody who lives life thinking, boy, are you lucky you know me. Sometimes we encounter people and we're watchful and that seems to be how they approach life. Or, at times, my own heart, my own thinking, well, at least I'm not as bad as that person. Or, well, at least I never murdered anybody. It says straightforward, do not compare yourself to others. In humility, we recognize that saved with the grace of God, there go I. None of us are immune to getting off track. None of us are immune to missing the mark in our lives. And as soon as we begin to look at the world and compare, and basically say, hmm, that's about, okay. I'm okay, because after all, there are some who are less than me, and there might be some higher, but you know, I'm doing just fine. And that's another way of saying, hey God, you're pretty lucky to have me, aren't you? Why? Because we're looking to the right and we're looking to the left. And what Paul is saying, no. Stand for God and assess your life and be watchful of who you are before God as you seek to love your neighbor as yourself, as you seek to bear one another's burdens by saying, am I being faithful? Spirit of God, as you direct me, is this truly loving to the neighbor? Is it truly a loving act for myself? So that we can take pride in what we're able to do without comparing ourselves to others by simply testing our action and being watchful of my action. Am I faithful? Am I missed the mark? For each one should carry their own load. Isn't that interesting? Bear one another's burdens, but each one should carry their own load. And it might be their own load of being mindful of how we stand before God, how I stand before God, how you stand before God. Or it might be a reminder that while we're called to be supportive of each other, we are also called, each one of us, to do our best to bear the load of our lives as God has empowered us and our capacity to respond to the challenge of our own life. Paul continues with the phrase, you reap what you sow. Verse 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A person reaps what they sow, and whoever reaps to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. And whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Again, this is pretty straightforward. If we sow seeds of simply pleasing ourselves without regard to other people, that leads to destruction. Pleasure for pleasure's sake, without caring about the impact on other people, without caring about the impact on our family, without caring about the impact on our neighbors. 
where if we seek to sow the Spirit, fulfillment of the law, to truly love God and truly love our neighbor, then we will reap eternal life. Fullness of life today, where we can take pride and say, God, as you have empowered me, I bring my life as an offering, as a gift to you. And be thankful for that. I also would suggest that there's an, another perspective about reaping what we sow. It's a theme that I thought about recently, recently a renewed interest over the last several months. And that is, how do I look at the world? How do I understand the world? How do I live out my faith on a day-to-day -day basis from a world perspective? You reap what you sow. If you look for negative experiences, you will receive negative experiences. If you look at the world problems, the world problems will become your burden. Terrible things happen. Recently, a helicopter crashes and seven people die. Illness, a friend. And then it doesn't take much before you start realizing, oh yeah, I talked to so-and-so and they knew so-and-so and then they know another person and they've got this horrible disease. Well, it's tragic for the individual. I'm not saying that illness impacts our life. But if that's what we think about it, that's what we dwell on, then it's, it's going to be self-perpetuating. You reap what you sow. It doesn't take any effort in our world with the social media, with news, with technology that we have at our fingertips daily to find negative experiences. That's the easy path. And borrowing from another portion of scripture, the wide path, the easy path, is the one that leads to destruction. It's the narrow path that few people find that leads to life. Focus on negative, destructive struggles. Focus on blessings and gifts and gratitude. It's our choice. Jesus said, there'll be wars and rumors of wars from the time that I leave to the time I come back. We're not in denial about the struggle of our world, but we don't have to bear the burdens of the world and internalize them and be weighed down by those burdens. It's not necessary. It's unhealthy. God wants us to have life and life in abundance. Therefore, we reap what we sow and we seek to sow gratitude and love and patience and kindness. And we seek to truly, in a healthy way, bear one another's burdens. It's not a matter of tuning out the world. Rather, it's the contrast to guard against taking on the world's problems as personal problems. It's not a matter of tuning challenges of people out that you know personally, it's the contrast of guarding our heart so that we don't take on those burdens ourselves. Each one of us as individuals standing before God, guided by this teaching, that is being mindful and watchful of who I am before God. Verse 10, as a summary verse, therefore, as you have opportunity, and God does give us opportunities, opportunities, do I look for opportunities? Let us do good for all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Reviewing this lesson. Common human behavior 
people watching. Common human behavior, comparison, possibly judging. What I've learned and the trigger for me when I catch myself judging is twofold. One, oh yeah, Gary, and you're that perfect. Who am I to say about another person and their behavior? And then the other part that I've been teaching myself is trying to be non judgmental can be a double edge. Okay? It's a good thing, judge not lest you be judged. It's a good theme, I believe, to adapt and say, I want to live a non judgmental life. So I commit myself to that. And then lo and behold, a trigger happens and I start judging. Well, then what happens is I judge myself for judging. <laughs> so I be trying not to judge the other person, but I'm judging myself. It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? <clears throat> so what I've been taught and what I'm learning to do is, if I find myself judging, it's just to know it. Yep, happened again. And then let it go. Caught in sin. Gently restore. Truly as guided by the Spirit. We are called to be watchful of our lives. My life. Your lives. But most important to be watchful for me of my own life. And when I observe myself missing the mark, opening my life to the Holy Spirit and inviting the Spirit to gently restore me on a path where I love truly and I look to, in a healthy way, bear one another's burdens. Intentionally reminded, guided, the guidance of the Holy Spirit to gently restore myself. We reap what we sow. I invite you to sow generously. I invite you to truly sow love. Love for yourself. Love for your neighbors. Love for God. I also invite you today to sow the seed of a renewed commitment to live in a healthy manner as you respond to the teaching of bearing one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens through prayer. When possible, practical hands of help. Bear one another's burdens through listening, encouraging, reminders of God's truth. So that empowered by God, Jesus, the light of the world, God's grace and truth, we are called, I am called, and you are called to be gently restored so that God shines brightly through our lives. Amen.